All right, so um, so I'm starting from uh, gluing this piece over here uh, the way I've been showing you. And what I have, I have a primer cleaner. So I'm applying this on this fitting and also over here. Also glue designed to CPVC and PVC pipes and this one also I am applying over here and over here because there's time you see that again This one is in, and it has uh, this piece to tie it, and it has a uh, this type of a gasket. So um, once this is done, um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually double check the dimensions that I've been noting, and uh, basing on my uh, informations, we had um, 14 and a half from the outside wall to the mm, center of our top so it appears to be somewhere here so this is the center of our drain and from the wall where we have the valve we had uh, eight and a half we have eight and a half, and I'm also marking eight and a half on this side. And uh, what I will do, oh, I have a piece of a straight edge, kind of mark it, so it will kind of give me an idea where exactly the center of the tub appears to be, the center of the drain. And the next step for me will be to play <coughs> with a drain to kind of adjust this. So each drain, when we're dealing with this type of drain, has of course this uh, nut over here. Then we have this uh, gasket that goes on top of that. And then it kind of nicely assembles over here. So we can adjust the distance, which is good. We can play with the uh, drain piece uh, as much as we want so uh, the next step for me will be actually to place this in side and adjust our height as it appears from my measurements it's supposed to stick out about three quarters of an inch higher and this is pretty much what we've got right now so at this point, this surface sticks out three quarter of an inch higher, which is what we need. Also, those drains always have a little bit of the flexibility. So, um, so I'm going to tie it right now over here, not to the maximum, just a little bit. And now I'm going to check. Uh, of course, I'm. Here is the center, so I'm kind of placing this with the center. And now I have to adjust this lamp to have eight and a half to the center from the wall. And looks like I have to pull it out a little bit. So it appears that this is our eight and a half. I'm tightening this slightly. So this pipe is in place, this pipe is in place, double checking, 14 and 
fifteen and a half and eight and a half. So this this is where actually the center of our train appears to be. Now uh, the next step will be to actually work with the overflow. Basing on my uh, measurements, the overflow is uh, eleven inches and three quarters from the subfloor. So because our uneven floor, I'm estimating this to be around twelve. And once again, having um, having this uh, drain kit that I'm using is good because we can use pieces that allows us to pretty much adjust it the way we need to. Uh, this is the piece that actually will be attached uh, on the back part. Okay, so um, so we got to that point yesterday when we installing this uh, drain kit. Uh, designed kind of uh, to give us more options when it comes to the installation so it's easier it's more designed to re for remodeling where we have limited access and I already have this part figured uh, the next step um, for us will be to figure the drain the main pipe is slightly off so I can uh, adjust because uh, the center of the uh, new drain uh, basing on my uh, notes we have 11 and 3 quarter, uh, 14 and a half actually uh, from the wall, and then we have uh, 8 and a half from here, so we can adjust this however we want it. And I already did that, but if I will have this piece just straight, it's not gonna lie because the drain is actually slightly moved to the side from the, uh, from the original drain pipe that we have uh, going from there, and uh, of course, we can adjust this one this pipe over there but it's not necessary with this uh, kit assembly uh, we have all the options to do all the work without actually getting down over there and affecting any other piping so um, so what I will be doing uh, I will show you how to actually play with the overflow so it's also nicely lining with the center of the new tub uh, and um, and yes for that purpose what I'm using I'm using this uh, piece that has kind of flexible uh, head let's say uh, what I'm gonna do this one actually will go instead of this over here and will slightly be turned uh, it gives us options uh, to attach the overflow uh, piece even with the tub in place so what I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna put this one for now, it has a sticker, so this one is gonna get, of course, removed. And what I'm gonna do, um, I'm, uh, the hive for, the, for our overflow to the center is 11 and uh, 3 quarters to 12 inches. And my goal is to have the center of the overflow about 12 inches from the level of the subfloor. So this one goes over here all the way and you see this pipe of course it's too long we cannot do it because the drain actually the overflow is somewhere here so what I will do I'm gonna cut this make it shorter right. and cut shorter now I have this pieces This one will go like that. So at this moment we have same piece just on a flexible arm, let's say. And now I can precisely, as you can see, adjust the height and the angle. And like I said, uh, we had about 12 inches uh, from the bottom, from the floor. So this is kind of height. Is our desired height from the wall we had uh, 14 and a half and this is looks like it's exactly over there the nice thing is that once we have the tub in place we can still sneak our hand behind the tub and and very easily adjust the over overflow I know it might be challenging to adjust this one and this one with a permanent fitting when working from here it has to be very precisely attached to the tub so the goal is to have as precise and as close as possible 
and doing this type of uh, overflow uh, connection gives us really unlimited options to play to attach it later the main uh, drain is a little bit uh, uh, more difficult we rather have to place it centered nicely first place before actually setting the tab and like I said and showed you a few moments ago uh, we also this is why we have also this uh, this kit for the drain that uh, allows us to play with this nicely um, one of the other things uh, will be to make sure that actually the drain is in level before actually starting playing with the tub so this this is in level right now and we also have a little bit of the flexibility movement so uh, what I'm usually doing before actually installing tub for good I'm putting uh, the tab without uh, just uh, temporary for a few moments to see if the drain actually nicely lining then I'm removing the tab uh, if uh, to put components that I will show you later and uh, but yes the good thing will be to have the tab in first make sure that whatever we did here nicely matches nicely works if we have to raise the pipe quarter or half an inch or lower it we can do it nicely with this uh, uh, kit for the drain. So my next step uh, will be to I guess uh, clean up a little bit uh, so I'm gonna of course vacuum the sections over there. Another important thing to remember you see many times uh, subfloor squeaks so what I'm doing always before installing any tiles or before installing tub I'm actually putting some additional screws where the joists are to ensure that later when someone walks into the tub there's no squeaking floor so keep that in mind cleaning is important remove any debris from the demo and uh, ensure that the floor is holding well uh, and this is one of the next things that I will be working on uh, so screw gun Got the screw gun. So yes, pretty much ensuring that everything holds well. Because like what I'm always saying, we're not doing such jobs every month or every year. When you're hoping to remodel the bathroom, you want to make sure that it will last for a long time. So. our goal to do whatever we can in the first place. Alright, so next step will be for me to actually clean it up and see how the tub fits in our drain and overflow lining up before final installations. Okay, so we have the tub uh, already in a bathroom. This is the tub that I showed you in the garage. Uh, the nice thing about this piece will be that it has this uh, kind of foam or some composite on the back. Uh, it's about uh, three quarters of an inch uh, thick and uh, it helps the tub to be not as hollow and also more durable and just feel better when installed and when nor when uh, during normal daily use so mm, I would recommend to get this type instead of the just regular one you see this is actually the metal here and this is actually the composite that has been sprayed on top of the backing so it's about a hundred dollars more but it's worth it and the next step will be to uh, see if our drain matches to the cutouts in the top. So let me just work on this right now and we'll see how it will go. Alright, so we're starting uh, putting the tub in from the corner uh, uh, where we have the valve because there's nothing on the way. We have, uh, there's a, actually pipe on the way and there's nothing on the way on that side so um, 
placing the tab. Uh, one person controls against the valve and I'm controlling here. And um, the goal is to have this kind of also sitting on our back piece, our fourth piece where the uh, two by four is against the wall. We don't want this to sl slip or slide. So, okay, so the tab is in place. Um, now I will show you how it actually fits to our drain. Let's see. So the tub is uh, temporary in place, it's uh, not hooked up yet, we still have to remove it once more, but yes, so this is actually how our drain came up, and as you can see with the uh, drain kit that I'm using, we can now slightly adjust that, you see, we can, uh, we have a little bit of the play, a little bit of the movement, uh, there's enough uh, space for the gasket, because this side actually of the tub, will be raised uh, during installation slightly higher because the uh, floor goes down the hill this way and we're starting from the corner over there the way I explained you before so the drain appears to be in exact position where it's supposed to and you see the overflow also turned, came up very close uh, we can also nicely adjust this we can put hand behind and uh, it will be very nice precise fit uh, ensuring good seal between the drain and the tub. Uh, this is a very, in my opinion, good and smart technique uh, that I've uh, been uh, doing on my jobs. Here are our pipes, the one I showed you how to hook this up. And, um, and yes, so having drain uh, matching nicely, the next step will be actually uh, to install the tub and I will uh, follow up with this in just a few moments okay so another uh, important uh, thing to remember I have to mention about it as well the tub has um, 60 inches and so our opening also is supposed to be 60 inches 60 and a quarter let's say in order to fit it this is how they're supposed to frame it and uh, when we measure the tub from lip to lip, it has precisely 60 inches. How should we do? We have 60 inches for the tub. And um, now, if we measure our opening for the tub, we have actually uh, 60 inches and 5 eighths. You dash them? Yeah, so we have 60 and 5 eighths. So what it means, we have a gap actually. Uh, uh, between the uh, tub and the stud uh, about a 5 eighths of an inch. One of the main rules uh, when installing the tub it's uh, uh, always to uh, push the tub against the wall where we have the plumbing. So if there are some spacings we rather push it to the wall where we have the plumbing and eventually build up the wall on the back slightly versus going differently. Uh, in older homes, the opening uh, for the tub is not 60 inches like we have in the newer homes, but it's actually uh, 61, 62, because back then they used to build uh, the walls differently with a metal mesh and a cement, so they've uh, been always leaving more space just for this wall. Those days we have uh, half an inch uh, underlayment um, available on the market, either a cement board or dent shield or some other products. So uh, they, of course, uh, framing the um, uh, bathroom, uh, the space closer to be more precise because we have only half inch of the surface. In this case, uh, we have a small uh, problem because. Uh, we have 5 eighths of an inch uh, space, so what will happen if I will push the tub against the wall where we have the plumbing and I would like to install the uh, board on this side, you see what happens? Actually the board goes behind the lip and the goal is to have the board uh, passing the lip of the tub. Uh, we can of course later build up the tiles or shim the wall but if the entire wall going through the entire bathroom is like that it will uh, show on the tile work that actually wall over here is uh, not the way it should be 
So uh, my next step will be to explain you what to do in such situation. Uh, like I said, the, the board has to be at least an eighth of an inch farther than this lip, the surface of the board. So actually tiles will go later all the way to the bottom of the uh, tub. Yes, so, so yes, like I said, the, the board has to uh, stick out or can be close to almost flesh uh, with the edge and then the tiles actually goes like that, right? So any water traveling on the tile have no option to get over there. So mm, what do we have to do? We have to do something to have actually this board going farther that way and we can like I said cannot really shim the bottom of the board during installation because the whole wall will be crooked. Uh, there's other thing that we can do. What we can do because we have a difference of 5 eighths of an inch uh, what we will actually do during the installation I'm gonna use some shims and I'm gonna push actually the wall the side uh, of the top here away from the drain for about a quarter of an inch. If I will have a quarter of the spacing here, uh, nothing will happen for this side and on this side our board actually will nicely be, uh, when installed to the studs, will have a nice uh, overlap uh, above the top. So when you're installing, make sure that you follow that. <laughs> Once the tub is installed, it takes quite a bit to later reinstall it if you en end up with such issue. And if it cannot be reinstalled, you will have a headache what to do with this wall to build it up uh, to the point where uh, it can, the tiles can be installed the way they're supposed to be. So, so this is it. Um, well, as you can see, the tub is in place right now. I have the bottom support piece already installed and actually let me see the level. If I would follow the directions that they have uh, in the manual to just have the, the bottom piece nailed 14 and a half or whatever height this uh, and then top installed without uh, checking the level of the floor, look what we've got. I'm placing the level and uh, this is actually how much out of level the top is and uh, because of the uneven subfloor so keep that in mind and same situation over here we have exactly correct distance against the wall and uh, over there and here look uh, what happens so all the water that uh, if the top is installed that way the water that later will be traveling on the surface of the tile versus from here going to the inside of the tub will nicely will be draining through the gaps that we have between the towel and the tub causing water penetrating all the way to the subfloor and uh, big problems. So remember, do not just slide in the tub, uh, please and check the level of the subfloor and level the tub correctly. Even uh, on my projects when homeowners trying to uh, salvage the tub, reuse it, uh, I'm always uh, checking the level of the tub because um, I will not let something like this to happen. When all the nice tile work is done, another uh, leak appears and causing damage to the subfloor. So if we have older tub, I'm either reinstalling it or trying to do whatever I can uh, to bring it back to the level. Another thing I would like to show you what's hap what's happening. Uh, like I said, we want to make sure that all the studs are in the same line. This is why we've been building up corner over there to make sure that actually lip of the tub would nicely touch to the stud. And look over here. In this corner, we actually have a quarter plus space looks like the corner is off but if I put the level look level perfectly touches 
So one tip, those steel tubs are never perfect. <laughs> so sometimes no matter how hard we try uh, and prepare, tubs are no good. And in this case it's something that I didn't notice, but it's something I can still work around. You see, the lip of the tub is actually dented slightly, uh, it's not flat the way it actually should. So what I'm gonna do later, uh, I'm gonna put shim, because I will be blocking the tub during the installation, I will put a shim to kinda fill this gap. But yes, it's, it's common for the tubs those days, because the way they're manufacturing those uh, certain edges to be crooked or not even, or even tubs being unleveled, because this this side supposed to be perfectly flat, this part of the tub, and what happens sometimes it's higher, sometimes lower, so this is something that you can also check before actually installing the tub, if the tub has been manufactured the way it should. So, so yeah, so make sure to center the tub with the, uh, to the point uh, where we can uh, easily installed, install our underlayment and this is what we have right now. It overlaps on top of the lip on this side and also on that side. So this is our goal. Uh, here of course we need another piece of wood, piece of stud, but uh, in order for me to install the tub it has to be gone. So we don't have any block in this just yet. After the tub will be in place permanently I'm gonna put a block all the way to the floor and also uh, secure the tub with a screw on that corner and on this corner we already have the piece and also I'm gonna have a block here where I will attach my underlayment so yeah let's well let's start with the installation now I have to remove the tub and I'll show you how the installation goes Alright, so we, we're ready to pull the tub again for our permanent installation. Uh, for that purpose, I have some equipment tools uh, ready, I'll show you what we need. But let's lift the tub. Same situation, when removing the tub, uh, right now this is new tub, so we don't want to damage it. Uh, we're making sure that the corner sits, rests on the support piece that we have. We, we don't want to just have this uh, slip from this piece. So Peter will be securing this uh, over there, I will be lifting from this side and we're trying to uh, stay in a 30 inches opening in a drywall that we have. So let's start. is out and well the next step will be for us to actually install it so let me get uh, ready equipment tools that we need for that and I'll be back with you in a few moments Okay, so tools that uh, I will need to install the tub. Uh, of course, main thing, the tool to uh, tie the drain. This is uh, how it, this tool looks like. I got this one in Home Depot for about 10, 15, 20 dollars, don't remember. Not more than 20. A wrench, a screwdriver, um, screw gun will be needed. Uh, some screws to tight to attach the uh, tub to the wall and those has to be non-corrosive screws or exterior use screws uh, resistant for moisture and water what else I have those uh, washers uh, to later to put the screw through so they will tight the lip of the tub. I'll show you what, how this is done. 
so some washers some screws non corrosive screws of course our drain uh, with a gasket overflow piece we will be doing oil bronze this is the one actually that came with the drain kit I'm not gonna use it we're using bronze plumbers party will be needed and another thing that I'm using in my projects to set the tub it's this great stuff foam filler that I will spray uh, under the tub so this is to fill the gap where actually there will be space between the tub and the subfloor where the floor goes out of level it nicely expands and it will work very well to fill the gap so once the tub is down this is installed uh, there will be no empty space and the tub will fill extremely nice extremely durable so so let me start uh, and I'll show you the first step the tub is over here we have the space already waiting uh, one of the another things before actually installing the tub please uh, make sure that our drain is already checked for level in this case and all those fittings nice and tight for the drain and for this drain piece and also this one because later they will be uh, very hard to access so we're making sure that this is actually tight and um, and yeah all right without it all this work will be impossible <laughs> but um, but yes uh, slowly uh, getting ready to install the tub but another thing that I forgot or not mentioned actually yet once uh, we will spray this foam product that lays over there under the tub uh, we have to act pretty quick because uh, this expands pretty fast so we have about maybe 15 to 20 minutes to connect the tub after this product being sprayed because uh, what we have to do right after the tub is in a correct position and the foam been sprayed we're gonna fill the tub entirely with uh, water we're gonna fill the tub with water uh, and we're gonna leave it overnight and uh, water will do two things for us first of all we will uh, next day we will uh, we still are able to put the hand underneath to, uh, to check if there's no any leakage on the drain but I'm doubting there will be it shouldn't be if everything is done correctly but uh, the main important thing will be the weight of the water will keep the tub from being lifted with the foam the foam expands pretty good and if we leave the empty tub without a weight inside you, uh, the next day you will see that the tub actually is several inches higher than it used to be so uh, the thing is that when installing the tub we want to make sure that we have a source of water that where we can actually fill the tub with the water or we can have a water in the buckets or we can have a water hose ready uh, or we can put some other type of weight like bags with a concrete or thin set or something water works the best if we fill it with water uh, it will give enough weight to keep the tub in its position and foam nicely expand under the tub and fill all these gaps all the spacings that we have between the tub and our subfloor so I have the water ready the valve will be replaced later this is the old valve uh, in this case it's gonna be used for to fill the tub with the water so all right let's start so what I'm doing um, I have this product and I'm going to uh, spray it uh, where pretty much everywhere where the tub, tub is gonna be we don't have to put too much of it because it expands nicely so this is kind of how the tub will be installed Ok, 
Okay. Here and there. And this should be plenty in this case. Because it expands to several inches. So, so this is it. So we have the foam sprayed. What else you can use? You, we, you can use mortar. You can use cement uh, to do that part as well but cement well over time some space might appear between the cement and the tub this one will actually nicely glue the tub down and uh, the foam will fill all the spacings so so let's move forward with the tub installation this is our sprayable foam and next step will be to proceed with putting in the tub Okay, this is permanent installation, so let's go. We're starting from the corner. Be careful to not step into the foam. Also make sure that there's no tools left and the top nicely sits on the support piece against the wall. Okay, so the next step for me will be to actually uh, tie the tub against the wall. Okay, so the tub is in place. Uh, right now I'm gonna put some shims. We have a little bit of the time. I'm gonna put some shims to kind of bring it to close to the level that we would like to achieve. I'm also remembering about leaving this space because we have uneven gap. And using screws so at this point we have the tub nicely secured against the wall so it will not gonna get lifted and the next step will be uh, for us to collect the drain so this is to come in a few moments okay so I have the first pieces already there right now I will be shimming the sides to the point where we have uh, where we have level. I'm gonna place the level right against. And this is what we want to achieve. Take a look at the 
bubble over there. This is our goal. Uh, same situation. Same situation on the other side. Here we have a level almost two. Okay, so we got level on that side. This side has been done as well. I'm kind of putting a little bit of the weight to see how much tub actually gets inside when there will be some weight, right? How much it changes location. All right, looks like this is it now. We check in level over here. The sides are in level. Here we pretty good on the level as well and against the main wall it's important to get also good level and looks like we okay take a look so so we want to make sure that the level is here that the level is here and the level is on the sides now once this is done I have a support, I can jump into the tub and actually start working on a plumbing. So what I will need, okay, I have my gasket, I have a drain, I have a tool, one, two, three, plumber's potty. Okay, the main thing, the most important that we have to connect right away is the drain so we can slowly start fill the tub with water. So let me start working on this part. So here where are we starting? Uh, we starting uh, from putting the gasket uh, nicely here. We're putting the gasket through the hole. Uh, the next step will be to actually get some plumber's party because the plumber's party will go on our drain piece so this is where we want to place the party okay and now I'm going to play with the drain. Okay, it already got the tread, the gasket is there. So what I'm go doing, first first of all with hand, I'm tightening it all the way. We can use screwdriver, we can use um, wrench, I'm going to use wrench, and tie this a little bit more. We don't want to over tight it, so be gentle, do not break anything. I'm removing the remainings of the party from around the drain and at this point the drain is connected. The drain is connected if you have a good uh, plumber's party, good gasket and uh, tight that to the maximum. The drain is in place so we almost ready to run the water but let me uh, also work on the over 
overflow and for the overflow what we've got we have this adjustable piece over there so now I can play with the pipe that I showed you and to adjust the horizontal placement of screws we have the gasket that came with the kit but we're not using this we're gonna use the one that uh, been uh, the bronze finish but now we're placing the gasket they manufacturing those gaskets the way they have those rubber pieces that's supposed to make installation easier but it don't so I'm removing this so to in order to achieve the nice gasket here I'm placing the, ga the gasket on top of our overflow piece I could done it before actually uh, before placing the tub it could be already in the position So the gasket is on the overflow and um, now we can see it actually over here. Okay, the next step I have these pieces to kind of help tide the drain I mean drain overflow This is actually our the moment when we will nicely tie the gasket. can install the finish trim uh, that we have over here the Peter. and in this box we have two bronze finish screws and our plate this is the decorative plate bronze finish this one usually I'm installing at the very end simply so it will not get scratched during towel installation but those screws actually also helps to uh, tighten the gasket and for that uh, this in. I'm gonna remove it later it's just temporary for now but we have overflow we have the drain and the next step of course we need a we have the drain assembly the stopper here so I'm placing actually stopper in its position okay so what we've got we've got overflow and we got drain nicely already connected this is how it looks from the other side as you can see everything nicely shaped up and now we're pretty much ready to turn on the water before actually turning on the water I still have a few moments um, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna attach those additional 
pieces of the uh, locking and here I'm going to go over here actually I'm going to put the shim to fill this the gap as you can see because we have some gap that appeared because we have to make the space even in order to bo the board to come up so what I'm doing with this I have this already in place and I have this non-corrosive screws with non-corrosive washer and I'm tightening the tub over here on the other side I'm gonna do exactly the same uh, installation shim nicely goes inside we don't want this to get too tight of course we uh, can do it in a corner we can do it on the other side at this point it's been secure over there the corner is not gonna get lifted uh, we can I'm gonna put screw a little bit later uh, and so we have those secured let me double check the level all right so this is the level let me check the other side everything looks good so uh, the next step actually I will uh, secure also the sides on the side same situation, you want to make sure it will not go anywhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use those shims. And later I will use the tool to cut them out because they doesn't have to stick out that much. That is good for now. Okay, so this nicely holds the tub on this side. And now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this block. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm placing this wood over here, this 2 by 4 this is our block that all works as a transition between the drywall in the bathroom and our tile board. Later, once we will be pulling the tile board, and I will also most likely work on a video how to put the tile board around the tub, so tub, regular tub, not in the shower, but around the tub. some screws. I'm always using non-corrosive screws in any wet areas. So that's one. You see uh, in order to install the tub or remove the tub we have to have this space over here exposed. There cannot be any studs. Because if we have a stud, we cannot install or remove the tub the way I showed you. Because the edge of the tub will be on the, the, tub, the stud will be on the way of the corner of the tub, edge of the tub. So we cannot just lift one side. This is why I waited uh, with the installation of this block to the very end. Sometimes uh, when they're installing the tub, uh, the studs appears to be exactly where the where the tub edges are. So for such installations, plumber will just slide the tub in. Because uh, when the tub gets installed in a new construction, there's no any drywall, there's no doors. The tubs are one of the first fixtures to be bring in to the house. Because they usually pretty bulky and in order to carry them in there's no any uh, rails on the stairs there's no any drywall any doors so often in order to actually remove the tub we have to remove more drywall like I 
had on one of my other videos and, and simply slide it to the point where there's no wood on the way of this edge of the of the tub because this this is about half inch side on each side that uh, has to be exposed we need to have a room to lift the tub it saves if we have this room it saves a lot of trouble but like i said sometimes we have to cut out more drywall in order to pull the tub out uh, enough so we have the access and we can re remove the tub the way it needs to be removed okay so we have this piece holding pretty well before i will tie it i'm also checking the level if the if there's a line what i've been showing you before uh, for our boards and you can see peter come over um, as you can see, it goes. Now it's pretty flat. All the studs are in the same line. And yes, so so we can definitely work with this. So now I know that I can just tight another screw over here. Have the screw with a washer. And I'm gonna tie the tub also on this side. Which is the British on it. This tub is not going anywhere at this moment. Okay. What happens to the shims? This can be cut. Shim is gone. Here also. Okay. And now uh, we have one more to put in. In the corner. This side of the top is also kind of not uneven like the other one. So I'm putting the small shim over there because if we will try to this this figure the top too much the glaze might just chip off so we I'm never recommending really to start hitting the top in order to fit against the stud because we might chip the finish this corner I'm living without a screw there's plenty we have two on each side we have five on the back wall so the next step will be actually to fill the tub with the water okay. actually I'm going to put one more shim here so it nicely sits on three sides three Almost like on three legs. Okay. So now it's time to take a bath. It's time to put back, Peter. Okay. So let's put some water. And this water is essential in order for the foam to not lift the top, right? Whoop. Okay. We have to do it a little bit more gently. So the top slowly fills with water. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually fill it to the point where the water will reach the point of the overflowing and uh, simply will uh, check if there's anything uh, that leaks because uh, before covering the walls, before moving forward with final tile installation, 
I'm always recommending to check for any leaks. So, so this is the next step. What I also did, I also added additional blocking in the uh, additional sections of the floor under the top, at the, under the outside edge and I also sprayed a little bit more foam through this gap. As you can see it slowly expands filling the space and um, the rest of the gap uh, later I will fill with a tin set because I'm going to install tile board on this floor when tiling it when tiling it here will be uh, the mm, quarter or half inch underlayment so when uh, when it's spreading tin set I will make sure to uh, also put some extra uh, tin set under the edge of the top so once this is dry uh, it will be a nice support as well and those visible edges of shims that, that sticks out I'm gonna cut off with a oscillating tool, the one I've used to cut out the other shims. So I'm gonna just cut it flesh with the edge of the of the tub. And run our tile backer uh, to those shims. So yep, looking good. The tub is almost filled with the water. I'm getting ready to take a bath. And yeah, stay tuned, because there's a little bit more to the story. So the water reached level where it starts to overflow through the our overflow uh, safety drain. And uh, once again, it's highly highly recommended to run some water through the drain through the overflow before moving forward with the tile installation and when installing the tub we can uh, access the plumbing behind through the back wall we can uh, stick our hand uh, to touch if it's uh, wet if the water got over there um, if you have uh, muscles and your hand will not fit you can get uh, the camera construction camera that actually helps us to look uh, at the sec areas that are hard to reach or invisible for naked eye and we can you can sneak the camera over there to see if there's any water dripping so there are ways to test it I mean if you have to buy some additional equipment or, or, or tools do it because uh, such projects costs and the goal is to do it right so don't try to save as much as you can avoiding doing some testing do and buy whatever needs to be uh, used to do the final test and to ensure that the tub is working because later it might cause you way more trouble when you will not do that part so so this is it and the tub is filled with the water I'm sticking my hand I'm checking at the overflow everything is nice and dry I'm putting my hand all the way where actually drain pipe goes inside of our main pipe that we left original and the peat trap Everything is dry over there. That seems that everything works just fine. So, so this is it. The next uh, step for me will be to replace the valve. I'm going to replace the valve. You can see this on some other videos that I have, how to install the valve and replace the valve for the shower, for the tub. I'm gonna uh, throw some pictures from this particular job as well. And the next to come will be most likely the tile board installation, but I will work on this tomorrow. So right now I'm gonna focus on the valve and maybe do some preparation to the floor. So yeah, 
Stay tuned. We will be installing Moen valve and it's time to work on that part now. Now you can hear how water overflows. through the overflow overflow works nicely I'm checking everything is dry cool overflow been tested I'm gonna leave water till tomorrow morning in the tub we're gonna drain some more in a few moments as well to ensure that the drain connection is working properly. Another nice thing to do will be of course to protect the edge of the new tub. I'm gonna put some uh, tape, some duct tape or whatever tape on the edges because there will be a little bit of a construction going on when building those walls with the tiles and um, so keep that in mind as well to not scratch uh, your new tub when doing all this work all right so the tub is in place everything has been finished all the tile work has been done um, as you can see Everything looks really, really, really nice. Um, we have some stone accent. We have 12 by 12 porcelain tiles, uh, and the tub, very durable. Fixtures in place. Everything operates the way it should. And yeah, so hope you enjoyed this video on the tub. And this is how the project turns out to be. And yeah, all the tile work done exactly the way it should be. This is our corner, so everything solid. So I appreciate you stopping by over my uh, my video and uh, check some other clips. You will see how I did tiling, how I did underlayment. There are several videos from this job to show you what it takes to replace the tub and have it functional and nicely finished. So stay tuned and I'll see you on the next job.